Can you spot the three main mistakes that Sandrato here at the bottom of the screen made that led to him losing this point? Now, this video is courtesy of Sandrato Plays Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to his awesome channel. I put his link in the description below. So let's check out the point and then we'll analyze it. So feel free in the comment section right now to just type down what you think uh, were the mistakes that he made. So let's go over the very first one. And it has to do with this shot that's coming right here. Look, there are three times to go to the net in tennis. Three times when your opponent's in trouble, when you get a short ball and serving and volleying. Now, what Sandrato is going to try is a shot to the corner that's going to get Robert in trouble. And you can see how he hits this ball and he tries to hit it hard and, you know, hit an aggressive shot. But let's zoom in and look where this ball lands. Lands just past the service line. So the ball has a lot of spin and the ball dips. The problem with this is it really does not get Robert in trouble. Robert's got a really good slice backhand, I noticed when I was watching this match. So the first thing is when you're behind the baseline and you are deciding that you're going to go forward toward the net, you must make sure that your shot hurts your opponent a lot more than what Sandrato did in this situation. You'll see on the previous shot, he hits this inside in forehand and he hits it, uh, you know, high with shape, but the ball is much deeper. This is a ball that you could see Sandrato going in on. This ball floats. You can see where this ball lands, it lands in no man's land. He could have hit this ball right here with an easy volley short into the service box, kind of, I didn't really draw that in the service box. There you go. He could have moved forward and take this as a volley short uh, into the open court or even wrong-footed Robert as he went to the middle. But he decided to go forward on this shot. So obviously, if he had his druthers, you know, if he could have changed anything, I'm sure he would have meant to hit that ball deeper and gotten Robert in a lot more trouble. Now, that doesn't guarantee that Sandrato is going to lose the point. And if Sanjano does everything right from this point forward, he should be fine. But let's watch the next thing. Do you notice the mistake that Sandrato made? It was right there. Look at this. No split step. So Sandrato's just running in. Now, I'm w willing to bet someone is saying right now, yeah, and Sandrato's moving too much like this. He's not moving to where he needs to be. Actually, Sandrato is going in the right direction. What you want to do is bisect where your opponent is going to hit the ball. And that means going to right there. He doesn't want to be way over here because if he goes like that to get up to the spot at the net that's about three feet over, he would be out of position at the moment Robert is hitting the ball. So where he's going is actually correct, getting pretty close to the uh, center tee. But he does not split step. We know that split step should happen somewhere between 0.2 and 0.25 seconds. That is like a real number. Like that's a real way of knowing when a split step should occur after contact. You should land your split step 0.2 to 0.25 seconds after the opponent makes contact with the ball because that's how long it takes for our brain to recognize where the ball is going. So we want to synchronize our body hitting the ground in our split step with when our feet, I'm sorry, with when our brain reacts. So let's go to Robert hitting the ball. So right there, one frame after. So we put this down and let's go to point two. Let's go point two, three. That's halfway between. Look, no split step. His brain right now is recognizing that this ball is going down the line. The problem, his feet are not in a situation allowing him to change direction. So his split step is late or actually has no split step. And now it takes too long to get over to this ball and he's in a lot of trouble. Here's a perfect example of a well-timed split step. Stanford University versus UC Berkeley. And look at the split step right here. We can use the timer and see when it happens. So right there is the contact. We put the timer down. And when does the split step occur? Boom. 0.23 seconds right there. His brain is now reacting to where the ball is going and he is landing his split step. You want to synchronize your brain and your reaction time with when your feet hit the ground. 0.2 to 0.25 seconds, that is how long it takes for your brain to recognize where the ball is going and start to move. He then moves perfectly into position and volleys the ball into the open court.
Here's another example. Rendy Lou against Marat Safin, uh, serving volley. And you can see there's the contact. Let's go to right, there's, uh, we'll go right there. There's the contact. And we see when Rendy Lou split steps after that. Boom, 0.25 seconds. There it is. It's perfect. You want to land after your opponent hits the ball. And that's what Sandrato did not do. He did not split step. He did not time the split step correctly. And so it's just absolute perfection here from Randy Liu and his split step timing. So we saw that he didn't get him in trouble and started going forward. And then he did not split step. And here's kind of the final nail in the coffin. So now Sandrato is in trouble. He's got this low volley. He's defensive. He's below net level. When you have a low volley, it is in your best interest to hit the ball straight ahead. Don't try to win the point on low volleys in singles. Low volleys have to be hit up. And watch what he does with this volley. He hits it up and the ball floats. And what he has done by hitting cross court is he has moved his opponent to the other side of the court while he is over here. You don't want to move your opponent to the side of the court you're not on if you cannot end the point. If you cannot end the point, keep them on your side. That way you have to do less moving. Because he hits his volley cross court, and you can see his body weight after he volleys, he, he volleys this way. Watch how his weight still keeps going off to the right. His weight keeps going off to the right. So now he knows, uh-oh, and I guarantee you, as soon as he hit that volley, he's thinking, uh-oh, this is not good. And he has to quick move over. Because since he's hitting the ball cross court, and let's actually get the ball to where Robert's hitting, Sandrato right now is out of position. Sandrato right now is a dead duck on a down-the-line pass. If he gets over there farther and gets actually to bisect, which is on the same side of the court, where he can bisect the down-the-line and the cross court, he would then be, if he like moves over here fast, he's then susceptible to a cross-court pass that has a lot of spin and it uh, dips you know, cross-court into the service box. Or he can have a topspin lob easily hit right over his head. And since Sandrato was so worried about this down the line, he's susceptible to a cross-court lob that goes over his head. There's so many things that can happen to you when you hit a low volley cross-court in singles. Now, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of Keyboard warriors saying, oh, Ryan, when I'm in this situation, I always hit these perfect drop volleys that land in the service box. Well, Sandrato is a really good player, and he was unable to do it, partly because he didn't split step, right? But also, this is a really hard shot to hit. It's really hard. This ball has a lot of backspin on it, right? So the backspin makes the ball want to kind of drop down, so you have to open up your strings. So you have to open up your racket more. It's hard to calculate that. And ultimately, you know, the, the, all three things really led to him losing this point. So I'm wondering how many of those in the comment section, how many of you got any of those right before the video started? Now, if you want to learn how to win more singles matches, then I invite you to check out the new Rules of Singles. It's a brand new online solution from Will Hamilton over at Fuzzy Yellow Balls, where he's teamed up with Craig O'Shaughnessy the leading stats guy in the world when it comes to what is working on the Pro Tours, what isn't working, and how you, the recreational tennis player, can use this info to help you win more matches. To check out the new rules of singles, you can do one of two things. First, you can simply get the Fuzzy Yellow Balls app in the App Store, or just click below. My link is in the description. I'm also gonna pin it in the first comment. And if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, maybe you want to find a local league at your level, or maybe you want to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link for Play Your Court. And it's playyourcourt.com slash two-minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. Do what Sandrato does. Film yourself playing matches. When you get yourself in a situation where you feel like you can really hurt your opponent, make sure you do before you start going forward. When you go forward, make sure that you split step just after your opponent hits the ball. Otherwise, it's going to take you too long to change direction, no matter where you've got to go to get that ball. It doesn't make a sharp turn. It doesn't make a sharp change of direction. And you will often be off balance putting your racket 
on that volley. And when you get a low volley, keep the ball straight ahead of you. Then it takes you less distance and time to bisect their shots. When you hit that ball cross court, it takes you too long. You got a quick sprint over to get to that side and you're susceptible to passing shots and lobs. You make these changes in your own tennis single strategy, there is no doubt. You're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. Sandrato, you got this.